Hello creatures, my name's Chloe, welcome back to my channel. It is April 1st, which means the Owl's Magical Readathon has now started. This is going to be a bit of an experiment as far as the vlogging goes, and I'm going to see how I go. So I'm going to go and get started on reading. I'm really looking forward to some of the books I've got picked. I think I'm going to start with Heartstopper and then probably go to The Paper Magician because they're both very short and I should be able to get them out of the way fairly quickly. Alright, so... I have Heartstopper, I have The Paper Magician. Heartstopper is 349 pages long, but it's fairly big illustrations. So I'm hoping this will only take me, if it's clock up there, that's why I'm looking up there. Uh, I'm hoping maybe half hour. Like if I go really hard with reading, I can do that. I would really like to be able to. So half hour, an hour. And then we've got The Paper Magician. This one is 222 pages. This one is probably about an hour as well, maybe a little bit more. It's so cute, I'd forgotten how good this is. It's so good. <laughs> I've read all of this before. I read it all online and it's still so good. It's just all her characters, they deal with their damage and communicate properly and it's so refreshing. Okay, I have an issue. It's really small and really petty. The first volume of Heartstopper is chapters one and two, the second one is chapter three, and this one is chapter four. So the boys go to an old boys school and their school goes with a girls school on a school trip to Paris. One of the nights, one of the girls has a party for her birthday and her girlfriend gets really drunk, so drunk she's going to be sick. They immediately take her, before she's even vomited, to a teacher. Now, I've never been on a school trip, but I have been a teenager. I don't know anybody who would immediately run to the teacher unless their friend had passed out in a pool of their own vomit on the bathroom floor. I just don't see that happening. I've had friends who have been so drunk they've been sick. You don't go to a teacher. It just seems really weird to me. I don't know. Heartstopper, Volume 3, Alice Oseman, 5 out of 5 stars, obviously, saw this coming, I loved it so much, it's so good, even, I know I've read it all before, but because it's been a little while since I have, and I'm further along in the comic because I'm one of her patrons, it's actually really nice to read it in this edition, and sort of revisit the lead up part, I'm probably going to reread all of these again pretty soon, I reread the different volumes every few months just because they're super cute they make me really happy um if you want to read these trigger warnings for eating disorders and self-harm the author does have links to support services in the back of this book which i think is really thoughtful and she mentions that this might be triggering so book one of the owl's magical readathon down and my first book for april i'm really happy it was this i don't know i just nick and charlie make me so so happy and uh, I don't know it's pro like I love it anyway but it's also probably getting to me a little bit because I'm in self-isolation and I live at home I don't live with my partner and I miss him so reading cutesy romance stuff 
is helping me at the moment and this is definitely one of the books that is helping me. Which means I'm now on to The Paper Magician. This one is also very short. It's historical fiction which I'm reading a lot of at the moment. I'm just reading a lot in general. My I have to film my March wrap up today as well and it's huge. <laughs> It's 34 books or something absolutely ridiculous. It's going to take me ages. So this will be the start of my enormous April wrap-up, I imagine, which is going to be really fun. And my Fitbit just buzzed, which means I need to go for a walk because since I'm not leaving the house, I need to make sure I'm exercising. So I'm going to do that before I get started on this one. Okay, so it's editing Chloe here. So my footage where I gave you my thoughts on The Paper Magician vanished. I don't know how. So I loved The Paper Magician. It was really, really good. I loved the magic system. It was really well thought out and consistent. I adored the characters. Sione and Emery were brilliant. I loved their dynamic. This book is very short, but it does a lot in a short amount of time. And I thought it was really, really good. I'm thinking of doing a whole review for this series very soon. Also, I'm sorry about the washing machine in the background, but I can't help it. So those are my thoughts on The Paper Magician. Now let's get back to the proper footage. Alright guys, Owl's Magical Readathon Day 1. I finished two of my six books, which was fantastic. I have started The Whispering Muse by Sion. I finally remembered why I wanted to read it. So I'm like a quarter of the way through now and I'd completely forgotten what this book was about but it makes sense why I put it on my TBR. It's it's an ancient Greek mythology retelling and I'd completely forgotten. So the idea is this boring as main character who writes about the state of fisheries in I believe Iceland because the book was originally written in Icelandic and it's been translated. He is invited to go on a ship for some reason that I've already forgotten because that's not the part that I focused on in this. And when he's on board the ship, the second mate is a very well experienced sailor who tells stories. That sailor is Canius, who is not a very well known character in ancient mythology, but so he was part of Jason's Argonauts. So he plays a role in the whole situation with the Golden Fleece and all that stuff, which, fantastic coincidence, I'm actually working on the Argonautica which those stories are taken from for my honours thesis at the moment so this is working really well as a bit of a motivator for me. I really like it, it's written in a really interesting style, it's also very short. I feel like if it was longer it might not be quite so tolerable because the main character is such a bore, which is the point. Like he's not interested in Canius's amazing stories from thousands of years ago because the idea is Canius tells one of these stories at dinner each night and he's got this little shard of um I think it's like a beaten up piece of wood from the ocean like driftwood and he listens to it and it tells him the story he needs to tell. He pauses for a moment in his story and the main character asks some other bloke a question about fisheries. That's the general tone of this man. Doesn't care about adventure stories, he's just really here for the fish. He's also very confused that in a place and era where consuming fish on board a ship is quite standard and fish is a large part of a lot of diets, they don't serve fish on board, it's all meat and so far he's quite confused with that. I am really enjoying it, I think it's an interesting take on stories that I've been familiar with. I love mythology retellings a lot so I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes and I'm hoping to get to Into the Drowning Deep as soon as I finish this one as well. I'm thinking of saving Aurora Rising for last just because it's the long it's easily the longest book 
that I'm doing for this readathon. It's also the one that I'm probably least sure about liking, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I have complete faith in the authors, but sci-fi is still something that I'm sort of dipping my toe into and experimenting with a little bit more. So it's going to be interesting reading a standard format sci-fi from those authors. I think I'm going to probably only get some reading done before I go to bed, the way things are shaping up, because I haven't gotten any writing done either. I don't know, it's super rainy outside and it seems to be sapping a lot of my motivation. Like this has been the longest day in history and it's only half past two, so yeah. Like it's looked like this all day long. So yeah, that's the mood around here at the minute. So I'm not gonna feel too bad about not being more productive earlier in the day and I'm just gonna go with it. I just finished The Whispering Muse. I am so confused. It was so good, but so weird. I, you can tell it was written by a poet because I loved it and I don't know exactly what happened in it. Like plot wise, it's not a concrete ending, but I have what I think it meant. And I know that I think I know the meaning behind what happened, but not actually what happened. I, it's a very poetic book. It was very, very lovely. I haven't given it a rating because I, I don't know how to. Like, it doesn't feel like it should have one, almost. It's it's one of those books. It's very, very literary, but very, very good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, yeah, now I'm going to try and get some writing done. So I probably won't be reading Into the Drowning Deep unless I start before I go to bed tonight. But we'll have to see. If the writing doesn't go well, I might. This book is hectic. I'm nearly at the halfway point. I'm like 49%. And it's all started happening at once. All right, it's Saturday, Saturday morning. And I'm reading Into the Drowning Deep by Myra Grant. I am about 20% of the way through. And there's a line about the people on the ship, the crew, their captain tells them to not use the passenger restrooms because there's always one passenger who can't wash their hands and that hits a bit differently right now it's really good though I'm quite enjoying it it's um it's taking a bit to get into it like we're 20% of the way through and the journey just started but I think it's gonna go somewhere really cool and I'm enjoying all the marine science that's included I've got a lot of friends who have studied marine science or are studying it so I like that aspect of it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm hopefully going to finish it today because today is going to be a reading day and we'll have to see what happens after that. I think I'll just stick to finishing this one today and take the last few books in this readathon a little bit slower than I did the first two. So we're six days into the Hours Magical Readathon for 2020. This is my update for today. I didn't film heaps over the weekend, so I figured I'd just give you a quick update. I finished Into the Drowning Deep last night and holy crap, it got, it ended up being a four star read. It was really, really good, but it was very slow to start with. I think I really got into the book at maybe around the 45%, 50% mark even. But the work that goes into the whole first half of the book is really really worth it. It's all interesting and character building and it drives the narrative forward in a very very believable way which is the thing that I really enjoy about this book. Plot wise it's seriously solid I think. Like it's a genuine progression of events that makes sense. The last half of the book was just insane. It was fantastic, it was creepy, it was, uh, it was so good. I do have some minor gripes, which is why it didn't end up being five stars. It did take a really long time to warm up. But then at the end, which I'm not going to spoil, but at the end, it felt a little bit quick. I don't know. I felt like the whole horror element could have been dragged out a lot more than it was because most of the action occurs in the last 20% of the book. But we also don't get any follow-up. There is one tiny epilogue and that's all. Though I did see some talk on Twitter. I don't know if there were meant to be more books in the series that were not 
support by the publisher. I don't know for certain if that's the case, but people, there was some discussion about it on Twitter. So I think maybe that's what happened and there was a plan to continue, which makes me so sad because it's so good, but obviously that is no fault of Sean and Maguire's. Uh, if you've forgotten, this book is written by Myra Grant, which is Sean and Maguire's pen name. And I know she cops hate for things like this, like her books being out of print or not getting picked up on Twitter. Just, it's no fault of hers whatsoever, obviously, you would think. But I would really recommend this book. I thought it was fantastic. The representation in Sean and Maguire's books, I genuinely believe, is virtually second to none. She's fantastic at seamlessly bringing in representation for all sorts of identities, and it's seamless. It's so good. It's because it doesn't feel forced. It's not box checking. It's not gratuitous. It's lovely to read, and I really wish more authors would handle representation the way Sean and Maguire does, because I really think she just does a fantastic job. I really enjoyed this book. If it had picked up in the intensity just a little bit sooner in the narrative, it probably would have been five stars. I gave it four stars for the first probably 60% and the last 40% are easily five stars, far and away. I will be reading the novella that preceded this book because I believe that's the story of the initial incident that caused the trip in this book. Oh, and if you've forgotten... Um, mermaids are real. This research vessel is going to prove it because they're pretty sure mermaids ate a crew seven years before this book is set. And it's set in 2022. Very, very good. Loved it. I'm going to be reading Reckless next just because I think I can get through that fairly quickly on my phone. And then I'll be diving into Aurora Rising, which I'm really looking forward to. So that's my little Monday update. And this clip is already way too long, but whatever. All right, so it is Thursday, it is the 9th of April, and I have one book left on my Owl's Magical Readathon TBR now because I because I finished Reckless this because I finished Fearless this morning, which is the second book in the Reckless series by Cornelia Funke. I really enjoyed this book once we hit about the 50% mark. It just picked up way more for me from what I remember because it has been a very long time since I read the first book. I enjoyed the world she was building, but it was a bit plodding in some places for me. It didn't have the same magic as, say, Inkheart or even Inkheart or that series did. But the magic sort of came back into it in the second half for me, and I actually really, really enjoyed it. I ended up rating it four stars. First half is probably three. The last half was probably a 4.5, maybe even a 5. So I split the difference. Really enjoyed it. I'm definitely going to be reading the third book, which is The Golden Yarn, but I don't know when. So now the only book I have left to read is Aurora, is Aurora Rising by J. Christoph Naomi Kaufman. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. This is the very, very last one. And I'm excited. I was hoping to get this readathon done fairly quickly. Obviously I haven't done it as fast as I wanted to but I'm still going to take like 9-10 days, maybe even 11 if I push it, this one out a little bit longer. That's still pretty good for a month-long readathon. I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to be finishing this off. In, I'm going to be starting and hopefully finishing this book in the next couple of days and then yeah and then I'll be done which is pretty cool. I've loved doing this readathon. It's been so much fun. So today I don't know if I'm going to be reading much of a of Aurora Rising or not. I at least want to read the first chapter maybe just to sort of dip my toe in. Um, I will also say like I've read 11 books. I've read 12 books so far this month including the five for this readathon. So I, I could have had the whole thing finished much much faster already if I hadn't been reading those other books as well but I don't know. I've been mood reading a lot and they want to what I wanted to read at the time. So yeah, so I'm going to read a, probably the first chapter, maybe two of this today, unless I get really sucked into it and end up reading more, which may happen because that does tend to happen to me with these authors. But mainly today is going to be writing and schoolwork um, and maybe some editing of some other videos that I really need to get done because I filmed them. Like one of them I filmed last year and I still haven't edited. It's ridiculous. So hopefully they'll be going up really, really soon. Oh, and I need to film my, and I'm also filming my hashtag stay at home reading rush TBR today. So that'll be another readathon that I'm going to definitely be vlogging because I've loved this vlogging experience. It's been really fun. So if you like this vlog, that should be going up sometime at the end of April as well.
Alright guys, I will see you probably, I might vlog a little bit of me reading Aurora Rising, but then I will see you when I'm done. I just got to a Princess Bride quote. This book is perfection and I love it. Hello creatures. So I have finished my Owl's Magical Readathon. I finished Aurora Rising on the 10th of April so I ended up getting through all six books in 10 days which was fairly close to what I had wanted to get to so I'm actually really really happy with that. I loved Aurora Rising. It was hectic but really really good. I'm really looking forward to Aurora Burning. The Owl's Magical Readathon was fantastic as a reading experience and it was really fun to learn how to vlog, kind of. It's not something that I've done before, so doing this was really, really cool. And all the books ended up being fantastic, really, really interesting. I found some new favourites like Aurora Rising. I also really loved The Glass Magician. I thought that was fantastic. I've now read that entire series which was really fun. So yeah, I will definitely be doing Newts later in the year and I will definitely be doing the Owl's Magical Readathon next year as well because I loved it so much. I am planning on doing some more readathons very soon so I'm going to be doing the hashtag stay home reading rush. I'm putting up my TBR video for that very soon because it starts in a few days at the time that I'm filming this. And then I'm thinking I'm also going to do Asian Readathon hosted by Read with Cindy because I didn't get a chance to do that last year and I don't know, I, it sounds really cool, I like the prompts so I think I'll be participating in that as well. Let me know if you've got any other readathons coming up in the next couple of months because I'm on a massive reading binge at the moment and I like having readathons to direct my reading. I don't know, it just, it forces me to move outside of my mood reading and find new favourites. So yeah, I'm going to leave this here. I really loved doing this whole vlogging thing. So yeah, I'm done. Subscribe if you want to, like it if you did, and I will see you soon in my next video.